okay now we have been calculating delta s of reaction but that delta s is not going to give me any information about spontaneity of that reaction just to revisit the first reaction that we worked on was formation of this ammonia gas they are in gaseous state now in this reaction we calculated previously delta s of the reaction but the delta s not of the previous calculation is not going to help me in identifying in any way like delta s not was suppose 1 minus minus 197 joule per kelvin now if someone asks me whether this reaction is spontaneous or not i won't be able to answer the reason i won't be able to answer because spontaneity remember how we started second law spontaneity was when delta s of the whole system system involves everything that is interacting if this reaction involves exchange of heat then surrounding is giving you heat so the whole thing the surrounding the vicinity around the tube in which the reaction is occurring the chamber in which this reaction is occurring everything everything comes into your system so you are considering an isolated system that's the 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 chamber in which the reaction is occurring and the the source of heat which is providing energy for the reaction to occur everything comes inside your system so when everything comes inside your system just by looking at the delta s of the reaction you cannot comment whether the reaction is spontaneous or not what you have to do is you have to calculate the delta s of surrounding as well because delta s of surrounding plus delta s of system if this thing is positive then we will be able to comment that the reaction is spontaneous because that's how we defined delta s if delta is coming to be positive then the reaction is spontaneous if delta s is not coming to be positive then the reaction is not spontaneous and delta s will not include the delta s of system but it it will include the surrounding which is interacting with the system fine remember in the very beginning we solve one of the when the first problem that we solve was of this coffee when this coffee is becoming cold it is releasing energy to the system if it has released 100 joule of energy it is at suppose 100 degree celsius or 373 kelvin the surrounding is at 273 kelvin now we calculated the delta s during calculation we calculated the delta s of this cup we calculated the delta s of the surrounding and then we commented that the delta s of this cup plus the surrounding is positive that's why this reaction is this process is spontaneous so we have to consider the all the system all all the system and subsystem that is interacting with each other so just by calculating delta s not of this particular reaction we are not in position to comment the feasibility or the spontaneity of the viability of this reaction now we have to calculate delta s of surrounding plus delta s of system okay now see when you are going for calculation of delta s of surrounding plus delta s of system delta s of system we have calculated from the given data now for delta s of surrounding you will not be given any data delta s of surrounding is not easy to calculate because surrounding is big we cannot calculate the delta s or change in entropy of the surrounding easily so generally we do not have generally what we never have a direct data of delta s of surrounding so we have to find some other way of calculating this delta s of surrounding and that other way is if we go back to the basic definition of change in entropy ds that is dq by t now i'm removing the subscript reversible because now it is understood that this dq is reversible so we may write we may not write but we have to understand that this dq is reversible dq now ds is dq by t now from first law of thermodynamics du is equal to w plus q fine if we consider a process where volume is remaining constant then this work done is zero for isochoric process work done is zero we know that now these kind of reaction now this will be occurring in Haber's process and it will be occurring in closed chamber so volume for this reaction will remain constant or otherwise if it's a solution then the volume of liquid and solids don't change 
the volume remains almost constant it doesn't change with pressure fine so if it's a solution or if it's a solid like calcium carbonate then also volume is going to remain constant if it's a liquid solution the volume of liquid also changes remains almost constant with considerable variation in pressure and if it's a closed chamber of course the volume is constant in most of the cases the reaction will be either one of these so it's fair enough to consider that work done is zero now q is change in internal energy so this dq is slight change in internal energy by t so your change in entropy becomes d, d dq becomes du and this dq by t is du by t now one more thing we have introduced the term enthalpy before and we know that enthalpy which is represented by h is equal to internal energy plus pv this is enthalpy h is equal to u plus pv now dh is equal to du plus pdv plus vdp that's how you differentiate fine now because the volume is constant as we have considered before so dv will be equal to zero now if i consider isobaric nature as well that the pressure is remaining constant as well then dp will always also be equal to zero so du will be equal to dh because it's a isobaric process and also it's isochoric process as well now this can be replaced du can be replaced as by dh so we can write ds is equal to dh by t fine fine now this dh is change in enthalpy so enthalpy change of the system is negative of that enthalpy change of the surrounding so if you have a isobaric process and isochoric process at the same time then this dq is equal to dh from for thermodynamics first law and this from this du is equal to w plus q from here q is equal to u and u is equal to h i mean dq is equal to du and du is equal to dh so dq is equal to dh using these two equations now see if heat is gained by the system then heat is lost by the surrounding and if heat is lost by the surrounding then heat is gained by the system so thus dq if dq is positive for system then dq is negative for surrounding and if dq is positive negative for system then it is positive for surrounding similarly if dh is positive for system it's negative for surrounding and vice versa so now let's come down to this equation delta s this expression of delta s of surrounding plus delta s of system now delta s of surrounding i can write as dh of surrounding by t of surrounding from this expression fine and delta s of system remains as it is now pay attention to this step delta h of surrounding i am replacing by delta h of system by t of surrounding fine and delta s of system remains as it is because as we just discussed the delta h of system and surrounding will be opposite of each other so i can replace delta h of surrounding by delta h of system okay because at isobaric and is isochoric process delta h is same as q so heat lost by one is heat gained by other that's why now if we are having a reaction in a open open tube like this where the temperature of the solution will almost be equal to the temperature of the surrounding suppose if i having a normal displacement reaction of copper and uh, zinc where a solution is not going to be heated up much or if it's a complexation reaction or it's a salt formation reaction where the solution is not heated up much then the temperature of system will be equal to the atmospheric temperature which is temperature of surrounding so in that case again i can replace this t surrounding by t system if i do that or if i mean if i i can replace or for time being let me keep it as it is let me not replace it i'll replace it later on but for time being this is what the delta s of universe is delta s of universe is change in delta s of system plus delta s of surrounding 